Taven, coach was telling us that um, at halftime of the Michigan State game before the coach's guide and some players were already, you know, coaching up the rest of the team to kind of start the second half right. Kind of what have you seen from that and are players kind of taking control and, and, and you know, becoming leaders in that regard? I feel like it plays a big part in our goal this season during the off season, coach uh, emphasizing to us that we are a player led team. So us taking on that role and responsibility was big and it's showing up more and more every day that we're all around each other and in like halftime in the locker room we all we all knew uh that first half like we tend uh, to like slow down die down we needed to get back going and we all knew that so we all rallied together and uh attempted to pick things up hey octavian who's a guy that you've really seen kind of step into a leadership role this year I would say a young guy, a freshman that came in, Dylan Wade, the tight end. Okay. Uh, he's played a big role. He's very vocal, and he, like, he came in uh, when we were in the off season. He came in like um, putting in a lot of work, uh, trying to make his name known, trying to become one of those guys. And he's been uh, blessed to have the opportunity to be a part of our leadership council. So I say him being a young guy, being able to take on that role is pretty big. And then we heard a lot about Glendon Miller. Just yeah. Now. He's got a reputation as a big hitter. Has he ever <laughs> gotten you with a big hit? Uh, nah, Glenn has not. Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Tay, uh, you know, last time Mar back here. <laughs> oh, my bad. <laughs> You're good. Last time Maryland was 5-0 and uh, was before you were born. A win this week, and the Terps are 5-0. and How cool would it be to be a part of a team to deliver that to this fan base and this program this week? I think it would be pretty big, but then again, it all dies back down to us, how we play, how we prepare this week. Um, coach emphasized to us that this week our focus is playing to our standard, and if we do that, we're likely to win the game this weekend. So we're just uh, preparing ourselves this week, digging hard through practice, and uh, trying to, like you said, come out 5-0. and That would be pretty big for us. Based on the success and the way you guys have played in these first four games, uh, how do you guys feel about the way you're playing and, and how excited are you guys to you know, carry that into this game here? Uh, we feel pretty good, but we know that there's a lot more that we can achieve. Um, we're aware of that our first three games, we, we didn't start off the way that we know we're capable, but we finished strong. And this past weekend, we started off pretty strong, but we didn't finish like we know we're capable. So uh, this going into this week, our goal is to have a complete game and truly show like to ourselves, not just to the world, like what we're capable of uh, achieving this season. Yeah, Taven, um, receivers coach Gunnar Browers, what is he like and you know, what kind of impact has he had on you in your time here? Uh, he's had a huge impact on me. He's one of those coaches, he genuinely loves you and cares for you. And being, uh, him being able to coach me as well as all the other receivers, it's pretty big because uh, I'm sure as, as you know, I, he coached Randy Moss. He, co he has a lot of guys in the NFL. Uh, he has NFL experience. So being able to like learn from that, ga uh, gain gems from that is pretty big. And I just intake all that information as much as I can. Yeah, going off that experience, you know, the top receivers that he's coached over his years, just what are some things in particular that you've learned from him and maybe been able to lean on that experience that he has? Uh, I'll say understanding uh, he has this slogan, uh, freak, like uh, the freak, uh, freak time, show time. So him uh, breaking that down to us, it challenges all of us in the room to, uh, to be a freak, which is a fresh receiver, exciting all crowds with a K. And it just challenges us every day that we go out there to just give it our all, give it our best, to uh, be the best that we can be. Hey, hey, Tay. Uh, no, obviously you got a chance to, to find the end zone this weekend, and you yes, talked sir. about Coach Brewer. Obviously, what he's been able to kind of help you and help how he's taught you and or taught you, uh, brought you along, things like that. But um, having a couple of veterans in the room, obviously Deshaun Jones, Caden Brayther, do you feel like you've been able to kind of see them, you know, maybe help? Um, and do you feel like maybe you've taken anything in from their game and installed into yours? Uh, yes, I have. I say, especially with Jay Sean, um, he's actually my roommate. Like going into the season, so like being able to like. Uh, He's like he's also a huge leader on the team, so and he has a lot of experience. So being able to like learn from him, me and him just talking, talking ball, it's pretty, it's really big, and I uh, I really appreciate him for that. Hi, Octavian, back here. Um, you talked about focusing on this week being a com more complete game. You know, having slow start the first two games, fast start in the last game. What was the key? Do you think to having 
the fast start in and making sure you start off again fast this week? Uh, it all plays down part to execution. Uh, so now we just need to, we know what we're capable of. We know we can finish strong. We know we can start fast. And like I said, now it's just a part of us executing to the best of our ability to have a complete game. And how do you think you've grown now your kind of second year as a major part of the offense? I say uh, becoming more of a, like a sound receiver, like learning what it means to actually play receiver. Because I played a uh, quarterback in high school, so making the switch uh, my freshman year it was like getting a feel for it, something that's kind of new to me. Because I, I could always play receiver and other positions, but like being able to like di dive into one specific uh, position and like really gain a lot of like uh, like you said, Coach Brew. He played a big part in that, gaining a lot from him. Uh, going into this year, it was pretty big, so I, I just focus on that, like what it means to truly uh, play receiver, understanding coverage is more from like a receiver standpoint, releases and things like that uh, to improve my game. Thank you. We'll go to I wanted to ask, you know, you kind of lined up in the backfield a couple times this year. How comfortable are you feeling in that role? Uh, pretty comfortable. Uh, not something that I'm not uh, too new to. Um, so I think it's uh, pretty cool. Just uh, opportunities to spread the defense out, get them to uh, like guess what's going on, and put the ball in uh, in uh, players' hands and things of that nature. Just different looks, different variations of things that we do. And then Coach Loxy was talking about how he's trying to balance the message after some games where you guys win, but maybe haven't met the standard that he mm -hmm. wants for the program. And when he comes and talks to you guys, how do you see him kind of balancing that message? And how do you guys as a team try to balance those two kind of conflicting ideas? Can you repeat that? Like, can you say it in a different way? Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> when you guys win, but yeah. don't meet the standard that Coach yeah. sets for you guys, how do you balance that in your head? And how have you seen Coach balance that as he talks to you guys post game? Uh, we know every win we get is big, and we know we like we said. Uh, we know like when we haven't met the standard, like coach comes in, and he says like we are we're already knowing that. So then it comes to a point like we come back in on Monday, and we just got to get back to work and just continue to improve as a team collectively. How do you balance wanting to enjoy mm -hmm. victory when that happens? It's kind of hard. Well, for me personally. Um, because like, like we want to have that complete game. So uh, being able to like balance it, this, like he has like this 24 hour thing, like enjoy the win for 24 hours. But once that 24 hours is over, then we got to get back to work. We on to the next week. So I say enjoying it just for that, that amount of time. And then knowing that Monday when we come back in, it's back to work. Yeah. Does anything stand out to you about Indiana for the game this weekend? Um, yes, they have a pretty good defense, uh, but our coaching staff, we're all confident in our coaching staff and as well as the offensive unit to dial up things to attack uh, some of their weaknesses. Anything else for us, David? No problem. Thank you all. Thank you. Go ahead. What is it like for a defensive back to actually get an interception in a game? I'm sure you're working on it all week. There's an emphasis to get turnovers. But when you actually grab one in a game, what, are the, what is that like for you? Um, I would say it's a surreal moment, especially it being my first one and being a redshirt junior. I would say it feels like all that work you did put in throughout the week to get there, all the ball drills you do, to actually have it pay off and mean something to the team. I think that's a really great feeling to have, honestly. Coach Loxley was telling us about halftime in the locker room against Michigan State where some of the players already were coaching up the rest of the team before the coaches got in there. Can you kind of address the leadership the players are taking and the ownership the players are taking this season, how much that propelled you to the fast start? Uh, I think it's the fact that we want to win, but we also know that we haven't played to our best best yet. So I think the fact that we see it, it it's like we're self-led a little bit in a way, which makes us better a little bit. So like we try to hold ourselves to a standard. Hey, hey, Glenn, obviously, I know you said, obviously, it feels, feels rewarding coming down with an interception. But just kind of being able to balance, obviously, I know when Bo Braid, when he missed, I believe it was a Virginia game, um, you stepped in to fill that role. But just also filling in, you know, as, as a nickel as well, corner as well. How do you feel like you've been able to kind of balance that? And, um, you know, what do you feel like maybe kind of clicked for you so far? Um, I would say 
really my teammates, they try to keep me up. Even like when Bo did go down, they would try to make sure I, everything was cool for me, make sure everybody was moving on the same page, make sure we had leadership coming from different areas, whether it be Dante Trader, they try to make everything seem smooth and go fast. And communication's key, so we, like you said, from safety to nickel. So I just need to make sure I'm on the same page, people talking. Uh, so. True, true, gotcha. And then um, just a quick follow-up on that. You know, I know week before, uh, I believe it was midway through the first quarter, you had a pretty big hit um, uh, right at the line of scrimmage. But just been, you've been an asset in run support. Is that something you kind of take pride in? or? Um, we take pride in all of it, honestly. But run support, I think, yes, sir. I like to set the edge. Yeah. You went, um, you know, as you stepped into this, you know, starting slot nickel role this year, how much have you leaned and learned on Tariq Still, who's you know outside but was in that role last year? Uh, I say a whole lot. I ask him questions all the time, how he would play things last year, but yeah, he gives me a lot of knowledge, especially coming from a corner perspective, because I'm more so a safety, so feet work, all that different man text. So I say he helps a lot when it comes to that aspect in the slot. First up, do you prefer Glenn or Glendon? I like Glenn. Glenn, okay, for oh, we'll make sure we'll say Glenn then. Um, uh, going into this week, you guys have a chance to be 5-0 and for the first time since 2001. What does it mean for you guys as a team to just have that opportunity to bring that start to this program to a season? Um, we don't even try to see it as too much being 5-0. and We try to see it as winning the next game and just trying to play our best game because we know we still haven't leaving a little bit of meat on the bone, as Lots like to say. Uh, Locks, uh, uh, you may know this was the running backs coach here in 2001 when they started 5-0. and uh, he, I asked him about it. He said that he sees some comparisons between these, you, your team and that team and the, the fact that he loves coaching you guys. Uh, just what is, it, what is the brotherhood here like? How, how special is it to go out there with these guys every week and practice with them, play with them? Um, I would think that's what makes us thrive a little bit because, like like, as Coach says, don't let your brother down. And we really live by that because we have such a tight connection with each player, like off the field and on the field. So I think that helps us on the field. Hi there, Glenn. Back here also. Um, Coach Loxley, I mean, you mentioned Indiana's quarterback, more of a long ball player. You, you've started out with a couple of games of more mobile quarterbacks. So what are you seeing from Indiana's quarterback and wide receiver group? Um, we try not to even too much get into it. We try to just make it all next game. And it's what we do more compared to what they do. So if we keep our technique good in all facets of the game, I think we should be all right, depending on who we play. Glenn, I don't know if you were here when uh, Coach Loxley was answering the question about you. Um, no, I wasn't. He was talking about basically how you've matured over your time here. How have you felt that, like, yourself grow in the time you've sat around? Um, I would say overall, it's just seeing it and seeing, like, what Loxley has actually been building. Like, I see we actually have something. So, like, to see that makes me want to be more of a leader because I know I'm coming into that role. So, I just want to achieve for I know we can achieve. And then I think it was you that came up with the nickname for the safeties, the Reapers. And uh, you know, people tell me that you love hitting. Uh, what what do you like about it? Like what 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 is some of the best hits you've ever made? Um I would say probably the Virginia one. I like that one. Just because of the angle and the speed I came down which and at which point in the game it was that was like a little turnaround for us to get us back on track to how we should be playing. How long have you kind of been a big hitter? I say all my life, honestly. It's more of a mindset thing. Glenn, this team has uh, defensively, you guys have only given up 12 points a game, but allowing 330 yards per game. Is that something that you guys are comfortable with? Is that something that concerns you guys? Yeah, that's why I say we haven't played our cleanest game and also leaving meat on the bone, like such as third downs and stuff. We can play a little cleaner because we also we aren't letting up points, but the yards, we still want to get those down as well. So. We do little small things each and every week. That's what we emphasize. It. And then uh, the next second question is when you guys are taking away the ball as uh, prolifically you guys have done, how much does that sort of feed you guys as a defense? Uh, I would say it feeds us a lot because it's like once one person gets it, somebody else wants to get a turnover. Everybody wants to somehow pitch in to the, get in on the party. Yeah, c c kind of talking about uh, the takeaways. Again, you guys ranked you fir first in the interceptions in the Big Ten. Preparation-wise, what, what do you think has helped you guys contribute to now being so prolific, taking the ball away? And how do you kind of continue that momentum as Big Ten play continues on? 
I would say making it an emphasis when we go into practice. We have to like like coach says attack the ball, whether it be good on good periods or whatever, we gotta attack the ball and like get good for whether it be offense or defense, like give each other the best look we can. With what we're gonna see in the game, so we try to replicate that. Coach was telling us that about halftime of last week, where before the coaches got in, players were already coaching each other up, you know, to kind of correct some stuff in the first half. So, how much has that player-driven culture helped you or contributed to your 4-0 start this season? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, I guess it contributes a lot. Um, it's something we've always been, uh, you know, trying to build around here. Uh, coach always says, you know. Uh, being a player-led player -led team is always the best thing. Um, it makes it easier for him and for everybody. And I think it's uh, just the bond we have in the locker room and stuff like that. So, Leah, you got kind of rolled around uh, on the sideline the last game. You had to quickly go to the injury tent. Was that something that bothered you in the second half at all? Or were you feeling all right? Oh, yeah, I was feeling good. Yeah, I was just a little stinger, a little straight. Hey, Talia. Um, Coach was talking about how he tries to balance the message he gives to you guys after a game where you win but don't necessarily meet the standard he wants for the program. How have you seen him balance that message to you guys, and how do you try to balance it yourself? Um, well, you know, we always appreciate all the victories. You know, it's hard winning, especially on the road um, against a Big Ten team. And, um, you know, it's always a hard task for us, but um, I guess in a way he congratulates us because at the end of the day, you know, we got the job done, but we know ourselves and uh, at the end of the day, we, the two most important things is winning and playing to, playing to the standard. And we did one of those jobs, which is the most important one. And, um, but like Coach said, we got to continue to play to our standard and that's all phase of, of you know, all phase of the football. And um, yeah, I think balancing it is just, you know, always trying to uh, refresh the next play. Uh, Every opportunity we get on the field, we got to do our job, execute it at a high level, and uh, we got to start being consistent, more so on the offense side, uh, start being consistent on that. And then I wanted to ask about Glenn Miller. Uh, what's your favorite story about him? Um, I got a lot of stories about Glenn. Uh, I mean, the first, we both came in together. You know, that's my boy. Um, off the, on and off the field, that's my boy. Um, I just like, you know, the competitive edge that he brings to the defense. I like, uh, you know, he's very tall, lengthy, and um, very quick, and he got good instincts to the ball. And I think, uh, bless you, I think he helps. He helps. Um, he helps us get better and um, going good on good and stuff like that. And I'm, I'm really happy that he's, you know, he's healthy, and that he's, uh, he's doing what he, what he's doing. And none of this is surprising to all of us. And I'm just happy for him that, you know, he's getting interceptions, turnovers, and he's just playing the game he loves. And you see him play, it's like he's having fun out there, really the whole defense. So. Hey, Talia, back here. Uh, if you guys win this week, you'll be 5-0 and for the first time since 2001 for this program. I, I know that's the kind of start and the kind of play you wanted to bring to this program when you came here and when you came back this year as well. Um, just how big would it be to go out there, win that game, and, and be 5-0? and Yes, sir. Um, obviously, winning any game is very exciting. And you know, I'm happy we get to do it at home. Um, I think Indiana is a really good team, um, but as far as you know, records and stuff like that, uh, uh, the good thing is it's really up to us. Um, we just gotta continue to play to the standard, and um, yeah, we gotta end up winning games like this at home, and it's gonna be exciting. I know our crowd's gonna gonna love it. And another one, uh, I saw your mom tweeted. I think yesterday. It was two pictures. One was a screenshot that you were leading all these categories in the Big Ten. One was something that your brother was leading all this stuff in the NFL. How cool is it that both of you guys are out here just killing it at quarterback and having the success that you are? And how much do you, maybe you guys, I know it's from far away, but how much do you guys feed off of each other when you're doing well? Yes, sir. Um, well, you know, all the glory goes to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I think it's just a blessing for me and my brother, you know, to play the sport that we love and um, really he loves his coaching staff and I love my coaching staff and I think it's you know all of these things are blessings for my parents and my our families to see and um, 
yeah, that's really all I can say. I'm just blessed to be in this position, and I'm very grateful um, for the position we're in. And yeah, it's a blessing. I get to watch my brother play on Sundays, and my parents get to fly all over the world, you know, to see them play. So I'm really grateful for that. The offense is one of the top scoring units in the nation. How much do you credit that to a defense that has given you guys short fields over the last two games? Oh, yes, sir. I think that's really the, the biggest thing, playing complimentary football. Our defense has been lights out for us. Um, I think turning the ball over four times last week. Uh, I mean, they gave us turnovers, uh, four turnovers last week. And you know, it's a big momentum shift for us. And it really gets the offense going too, to you know, want to score and get up early, especially um, with the late starts we had uh, recently. And um, you know, it's just a testament to our coaches and uh, to all our players doing their jobs. And um, we just got to continue doing that. In practice, when you have those good on good sessions, has the first defense picked you off? And if so, did they say anything? Uh, yes, sir. I think uh, Virginia week, um, we, we had a practice on Sunday and second Monday practice, so we don't really go good on good. But the days we go good on good, I think they picked me off like three times throughout the week. And on uh, Saturday or Friday night, that night they had like three picks or four picks, whatever it was. But um, yeah, they, you know, it's always iron sharpens iron and we get each other better. And, you know, like I said, I, I always love going good on good just because we get a good look from really the, our defense and, you know, we get uh, full speed reps, so. Uh. Loxley and the other players have talked a lot about playing to the standard and that maybe you guys haven't put together a full 60 minutes yet. From your perspective as a quarterback, what would a full 60 minutes of playing to the standard look like? Um, well, just doing my job, um, I think there were some reads I missed, some throws I wish I had back. Um, it's really just, you know, everyone, everyone doing their job. And you've seen, um, I think it was the, the last drive of the second half. You know, we kind of stalled a little bit. We had a penalty. And um, from there, I mean, good thing the defense got us the ball back. And even in our opening drive, I think I turned the ball over in the red zone. You know, just stuff like that, always taking care of the ball, um, being good in, on our third down and staying in third and manageable. And um, whenever we're in the red zone, getting points. Um, I think every drive, you know, we look back at the film and it's, you know, nothing the, the defense did. It's just little details that, uh, our offense, you know, needs to needs to uh, work on in order for us to, you know, always get points in every drive we can. And um, it's just stuff like that. It's really just the little details that we need to uh, harp on, and we need to continue to get better on for us to play a full full game up to the standard. So, yeah, looking at the past few years, Indiana is a team that your games have been really close, one possession games. What is what has made them so tough in the past few years? And looking at their team this year. What challenges uh, do they do they present on the defense side of the ball? Yes, sir. I think uh, their coaching their coaching staff is really good uh, defense wise. Um, they got different looks, and I think they got really good uh, players. You know who who are good with disguising looks and um, really getting pressure on the quarterback and stuff like that. Um, you know, Indiana is a really good team. They're a good defense, and you know every year is different. Um, but this year, you know, they got good. We got good players all around the field in the box and in the secondary. I think the secondary got like six picks already. Um, so, you know, they're ball hawk guys. They attack the ball and stuff like that. So, uh, like I said, every year is different, and we just got to approach this game like like every other game and just prepare the right way in order for us to to win. So. Anything else for Thanks, Thank you.